Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Esposito's weekly series of garden seminars. I am Audrey Post, also known as Ms. Grow It All. I've been writing a garden column for over 15 years, and I enjoy sharing my uh, garden knowledge and adding to it by answering your questions. And today we are going to uh, be uh, lucky enough to share the expertise of my colleague, Mary Rock, who knows far more than I do about fall lawn problems and how to control weeds, diseases, and pests. So uh, if everybody's comfortable, everybody please uh, mute your mic so that the ambient noise around you isn't uh, shared with all of us. And I am going to uh, hand it off to Mary. Can you hear me? Yes? All right. Yes. Okay, good. Good morning, everybody. Um, okay, so fall on problems. We did this, I think, two weeks ago, Audrey. Um, yeah, two weeks ago. Um, and I believe that the time was uh, an issue um, as far as the time of day. So we're going to we're going to do it again. Um, I welcome any questions that you guys might have, you know, throw them at me, I'll answer them. I believe Audrey likes to save the questions for the, for the end of it. Um, she's prepared a slideshow for us. So if she wants to get that started, we'll, we'll start talking about it. Audrey, I can't see the slideshow. Ah, here we go. Now I can. Okay. All right. Uh, All right. So, um, like it says, your first line of defense against weeds is proper fertilization. A healthy lawn um, is a lawn with less weeds, of course. Um, fertilization, um, be it organic or synthetic, um, is always you know, a good idea. Um, centipede, you want to fertilize twice a year, uh, typically in the spring and then again in the fall. Like right now, it's a perfect time, especially if it's going to rain today, um, to fertilize. You can either use um, right now the 5020, um, which is a Graco uh, blend that they blend for us, or you can use something my favorite, which is Melorganite. Melorganite is an organic fertilizer. Um, it, it gets my lawn plants, etc., cetera, um, really, really deep, deep, beautiful green color um, because it's very iron rich um, and, and it's organic. So that's always a good thing. Um, 5020 is good stuff too. Um, helps you build strong, healthy roots throughout the winter winter months um, so that when spring rolls around, your, your lawn's ready to, to thrive. Um, so right now is a great time. Um, you know, typically people want to want to rise. Um, they come in and they want to want to rise really early, like in August and September. And it's, you know, September's fine, um, but um, August is a little bit early only because our summers seem to sometimes roll into November, December. So depending on the weather, like you know, yesterday it got up to ninety degrees. Um, you still have time. You can wait until probably the end of this month, end of the beginning of November to want to rise. Um, the five zero twenty is great doesn't have any kind of herbicide in it. So if you're looking to help prevent weeds throughout the winter, um, that's not the one you want. This is the one you want right here um, by Fertilum. We've sold this particular one for years. Um, this is not going to kill any weeds. Um, it, it, it is just like the label says, it is a weed preventer. It has a product called Dimension in it. Um, Dimension, basically the way um, weed preventers work, um, they only last for so long. They don't last forever. Um, that's a big misinterpretation about um, pre-emergence. Um, the chemical reaction they make lasts anywhere from 60 to 90 days, depending on weather, um, lawn activity, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you want to um, you know, make sure that you apply if weeds are a, a, an herb, a, a weed preventer every you know 60 to 90 to get 90 days the way it works is um they make this you know if, if if this is your lawn right here and this is your soil line the um the herbicide makes a gas barrier right at the surface of the soil so when that little weed starts to pop up that gas barrier kills it 
Um, so that's how they work. It doesn't really, a lot of people say, well, it kills weed seeds. Not really. It, it basically kills the, the sprouts that the weed seeds try to put up. It's not going to get everything. There is no magic formula that kills and prevents every single weed from coming up in your lawn. But the longer that you maintain your lawn with, um, by, by, by way of using pre-emergence and fertilization, you know, eventually you'll get everything good and under control. Um, and dimension's great because you can also put it in your flower beds. So that's, that's a bonus in my book. You can put it in your lawn, you can put it in your flower beds. You cannot put it in your vegetable garden though. No. All right. Any questions about that? What is this? It's my gardening Zoom call. Okay. So major common fall and winter weeds. Um, these weeds are, oh God. Um, these weeds are definitely um, um, into fall weeds. Dove weed, I don't know how many of you guys, you know, raise your hand if dove weed's a problem for you. It's, it's a horrible weed. Um, uh, Florida pusley is another one. Chamber bitter, crabgrass, dollarweed, betony, spurge. Betony, you'll start seeing um, here um, um, soon. Um, dove weed's awful. Um, if you see all those pretty little flowers, purple flowers on top, they're deceiving. Those are actually, um, they are flowers, but hidden beneath that flower are little seed pods that contain hundreds and thousands of, of little seeds that are just ready to sprout in your yard and take over. Also, you know, by looking at the dove weed, a lot of people are fooled by it because if you look at it, it does have a very similar look to St. Augustine. So, you know, if, if you don't walk through your yard every day and look and, and you, you walk out there into your yard one day, you know, you're looking, everything looks fine. It looks great. It looks really pretty and green. And then the closer you get, you notice, well, I've got this giant patch that's not St. Augustine anymore. And it's dove weed. Dove weed's extremely hard to control. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. It can take several years to get it under control. Um, it's, it's very invasive. It's very easy to grow um, because it produces by seed or by stamen. If you pull it, I don't recommend pulling it because pulling it, if you just leave a little bit behind, it, it's going to sprout off that little bit that you left behind and it's just going to boom, it's going to take over. Um, you, um, when you spray to kill it, we have a product called Blindside. Um, that is recommended for dove weed um, for two reasons. One reason is it kills it. The other reason is it sterilizes the seed it produces. Um, when you kill it, um, kill it off, you're going to have these big bulb patch patches in um, in your lawn. Um, a lot of people, yep, that's it right there, blind side with the spreader sticker. The surfactant's important because um, dove weed has kind of a um, slick surface, so you want to make sure that you get a good stick, a good kill. Um, I recommend using spreader sticker and any type of insecticide or herbicide because it just it makes the chemical work better. Um, but you're going to have big bulb patch, patches in your in your lawn. A lot of people come back and say, well, it killed my grass. Didn't kill your grass. There wasn't any grass there to kill because the blind side is so aggressive. It absolutely smothers, suffocates, and chokes out your, your grass. Um, so blind side, if you, if you have dove weed now, I would recommend putting it down now. You'll put the blind side away for the winter. And then typically we see the dove weed um, start to, it'll start sprouting in May, but you probably won't notice it until July or so. And that's when it just really takes off. It loves, you know, our warm tropical climate. It loves rain. The more water, the better. It thrives with that. Um, so there are a few little tricks on killing it. Um, you know, spraying the blind side when we haven't had rain for several days, um, you get a better kill that way because it loves water. So it's thirstier. It soaks it up really good. Um, that and using the spreader sticker make a huge difference. Now, blindside kills more than just dove weed, and it is expensive. Um, if you were ever to read the label, it, it kills most everything that Audrey's going to show us on the slideshow she made. Dove weed is going to kill. So, if you have all these weeds, you don't have to buy all of these different products. You can typically you can pick one to kill everything. Blindside's a great one. Um, the only one that doesn't kill is chamber bitter, but we'll get to that later. Florida pusley. Um, this one's become more of a there. Okay. more of an issue over the last few years. Um, Come on, Dave. 
Florida Pusley um, uh, can, can take over just, uh, just as well as the dubweed can. Um, it's got the little white flower. It looks like almost a little, it reminds me of a pin cushion. Um, it can, has a very, very thick root. Um, it's another one that I don't necessarily recommend pulling um, only because of the way it reproduces. It is something that you would want to spray to kill. Um, the, there are several chemicals that kill. The blind side kills it, Celsius kills it, Sedgender kills it. And I think that's it as far as what kill it. Yep, there we are, Sedgender is another great one. Sedgender can be used um, pretty much year round. Um, it's going to kill um, nut sedge, crab grasses, um, Florida pusley, a lot of things like that. And another thing, another little hint for you guys right now, um, next spring, a lot of you guys get this little um, weed called um, annual bluegrass, Poa annua. It has a very fluffy top to it. If you use sedgender now, it acts as a pre-emergent against the annual bluegrass um, because believe it or not, that annual bluegrass is actually the seed right now is getting ready to start emerging and, 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 and getting ready for next spring. So you would want to, to spray that now for um, annual bluegrass if you had it. Um, chamber bitter. Chamber bitter is another, um, another devil weed is what I call it. I've got a front yard that's full of it right now. Um, if you look closely at that picture, you can see the little round um, pearl-like seed pods at the bottom. Um, those little seed pods, just like the dove weed, they, they hold you know, tons of seed that drop into your lawn and sprout up. Um, it's notoriously hard to get rid of. Um, there's not a lot of stuff that kills it. There's two products. And Image actually doesn't kill it. Celsius and weed-free zone. Or what kills the um, the uh, chamber bitter Celsius? Um, you can use year round um, Celsius. You can use year round. Um, it, it, it does really really well. Weed free zone, yeah. however, um, you you cannot use year round. We stay home. You go next. We Evelyn, you need to mute your mic. Weed free zone can only be used in the cooler months. Um, we just now brought it out on the shelf for people to use. Um, um, it does have a heat restriction on it and you've got to be careful with a lot of these um, chemicals. They do have heat temperature restrictions on them. Um, uh, like image that you're looking at right there. Image cannot be used when your grass is dormant. It can kill dormant grass. So you have to be really, really careful when you spray it. And that's what we're here for. You know, you guys, with your questions about your lawn you can call us you can come in you know Espositos is here um, to help you guys have a successful lawn garden etc celsius though is another one of those chemicals that kills so many different types of weeds you could put that in your cabinet as an arsenal against um, a, a lot of weeds that are up and growing such as the chamber bitter it kills crabgrass it kills a lot of the weeds that are going to be up and growing um, so you wouldn't necessarily need to buy anything more than that. Um, it doesn't, I don't think it kills dove weeds. So, you know, it's, it's like, well, gosh, you know, if you have one or the two of them, you kind of have to make a hard choice there. Um, no, the said gender and image cannot be used in a vegetable. None of the stuff we're talking about today, guys, can be used in a vegetable garden. Just absolutely not. Um, you never, ever, ever put any of these herbicides in your veggie garden and your flower garden, well, we'll get to that when we get to another chemical. Um, you have to be really careful with that. Unfortunately, it's hard to do that. So chamber bitter is another hard one. Um, this is one though that I do recommend pulling as you see it. I probably pull it every day when I get home from work. Um, if I see some sprouting, I pull it up. All right, crabgrass. Um, crabgrass is tricky because there are so many varieties of crabgrass. Um, I mean, there's probably thousands of different types of, uh, of crabgrass out there. Um, you know, crabgrass is one that, you know, you see the tall spiky things, but it kind of creeps out on your lawn. Um, a good way to identify crabgrass is when you pull some up, the stems are always going to be hairy. They're going to have little fine hairs along it. So you can, um, you, you can identify it that way. There are a lot of chemicals that will kill crabgrass. Um, image kills crabgrass, sedgender, um, um, the, there's a large uh, and a small crabgrass, there's all different kinds. 
Um, so they are selective. The Celsius kills crabgrass, the blind side kills crabgrass. So there's a lot of good crabgrass killers out there. There's another one called over the top that kills some of the harder to kill varieties like Johnson grass, goose grass. I don't know if anybody's ever dealt with torpedo grass. That one right there is, is um, very difficult to get a whole, um, rid of. Um, the image will kill your basic uh, crabgrass in the lawn as well as the um, it'll kill nutsedge, dollar weed, um, clover, um, lespedesia, um, just about everything I've talked about. <clears throat> I don't think image kills lespedesia, but the sedge gender kills it, the blind side kills it, and the Celsius kills lespedesia. Um, so you can use any of those to get rid of it in your lawn. You just want to make sure that you're using it at a certain time of the year. And I think that the weed tree zone kills it as well, but I don't have a label in front of me to, to check, but I'm 98% sure that the weed tree zone kills Lespedesia as well. Um, the image is another good one, but remember you can't spray, spray image um, in the wintertime when your grass is dormant. You gotta wait till spring when that grass is fully emerged, 100% green and ready to go. And yes, Celsius is just as expensive as blindside. It absolutely is. It is expensive. All right. All right, dollar weed. Um, <clears throat> sure, most of you guys here in Tallahassee are familiar with dollar weed. It's, um, I think it's pretty. Um, uh, a lot of people do, a lot of people don't. Dollar weed grows in mostly wet areas. Um, you see it a lot around the edges of, of ponds, lakes, um, just areas you're on that might be stay wetter than others. You'll see it, the dollar weed, um, um, little, I call them lily pads because they can get rather large. Um, they can be controlled. They can be controlled with image. They can be controlled with um, blindside and Celsius. Um, if, if you want to get um, you can spray image to get rid of them. In the, the, the winter months, you can spray it with the Celsius or the blindside to, to keep a control um, over the dollar weed and, and knock that out of your lawn if it's an issue. Um, if it gets in your flower beds, that's another one that's going to be harder to kill. Um, there is a method, though, that you can use, especially if the dollar weed's really invasive in there and if it's big. Um, you can instill what I call the paintbrush method. Um, a lot of times if you have um, hard to kill vines and different things like that, you can, um, you can mix up the chemical, get an old paintbrush that you just want to throw away and it's tedious, I know but you can go through and paint the chemical onto these weeds if they're in your flower beds. Um, take care of them like that. I just don't recommend spraying them in the flower beds. Keep them as far as away, you know, no spraying in your flower beds. That's not gonna work. Image can be sprayed over some ornamentals, but not a lot. It's mainly gonna be greens like Mondo grass, Asiatic jasmine and stuff like that. But tender flowers, herbs, vegetables, that's a big no-no there. But the label will tell you what you can and cannot spray it on. Oh, Florida bet betony, uh, better known as rattlesnake weed. Um, you know, most of you guys are probably familiar with that. It gets the really long um, root that looks like a rattlesnake uh, tail. And that's... Um, betony is hard to control because of those roots. Um, if you pull it and you leave that root behind, it's just going to re-sprout. Um, I've known, I've had customers over the years who have actually excavated their lawns or their flower beds to try to get the betony out of it. Um, and while, you know, not all of us have the resources to do such a thing, and I don't really recommend doing that because, you know, there are chemicals that can control it. It is uh, one way to do it. But betony can be controlled with... Um, that weed free zone kills it right there. Um, Celsius does kill it as well. And I'm pretty sure blindside kills it. So um, the betony you're gonna see growing in the cooler months, you're gonna start seeing it soon. It's gonna be in your beds and whatnot. So you can use the weed free zone in your lawn to take care of it. Um, in your flower beds, you can spot treat it with you know something like Roundup or um, we have an organic product called Natria. I'm not convinced that the Natria is gonna kill it down to the root. Um, I, I think it's going to kill the top of it, and that's going to be that. Um, spurge. Spurge is um, actually pretty easy to kill. Um, you see this a lot. It's really low to the ground. Um, it creeps out. So when you mow your grass, you typically don't mow the spurge because it is so low growing. Your blade usually goes right over it. 
um, that you're going to see in this uh, picture and sample right here. It's got a ton of little um, seeds on it. So it's just another one that produces a lot of seed. Um, everything that I've talked about except for the image kill spurge. Um, and there's a lot of different types of spurge too. Um, your organic options, yep, hand pulling um, on some of them. Some of them I don't recommend hand pulling. Um, mulching in your flower beds helps. Um, Pre-emergents, yes, I can't say enough about them. They do help. There's another pre-emergent that works better. It's what our spray department uses for um, lawns that have the dove weed and the chamber bitter in it. It's called Gallery. We don't have a picture of it and that's okay, but we do sell it. It's expensive, um, but it does target those two um, weeds, the chamber bitter and the dove weed. And the soil solarization, a lot of people do that. Um, That's where you take plastic and you lay it down over your, um, you know, your area of your garden. Most people do it in vegetable gardens and stuff. Um, anywhere from three to six months and sometimes longer. And you just kind of let the sun, um, you know, bake your, your, your soil and, and it sterilizes it. Um, so that's an option too. But of course, if you have a big lawn, eh, I don't know if you'd want to do that. Um, Non-organic options. Um, these are your options for, um, I guess, spraying, you know, in flower beds around trees and shrubs and stuff like that or Roundup. A lot of people don't like Roundup. It has a bad name and a bad rap. Um, so, you know, using it as a personal choice there, um, but it does kill weeds. It does kill um, stuff in flower beds. Um, the dicamba is actually, um, uh, we have this uh, dicamba, the 2,4-D weed free zone. Can't be used near flower beds, but I cannot say enough good things about the weed free zone. It is a great herbicide for your lawn in the cooler months. There it is, weed-free zone. <clears throat> so now with the temperatures um, cooling down, except for you know this past few days, it got a, got a little warm. Um, the weed-free zone is great. Um, it works quicker. Weed-free zone is basically 2,4-D plus three chemicals that kind of, um, I call it 2,4-D on steroids. It kills quicker and it kills more weeds. So, you know, 2,4-D can take you know, um, four to six weeks to kill everything out. The weed-free zone with the added chemicals in it kind of speeds up that process and it, 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 it branches out and it kills more weeds than the 2,4-D does uh, by itself. 2,4-D has been around for many, many, many years. It's a good herbicide, works great. All right, this is Natria. Um, Natria is um, an organic, we get asked for organic um, solutions to, to weed problems all the time. Um, there's not a lot of stuff out there that we found that actually works. We will bring the products in, we will test them first because they, they're expensive. And you know we wanna make sure what we're selling you works well. This is one that we brought in. I took it out back at a store. I sprayed a ton of weeds. I sprayed a tray of plugs and it killed it. It actually wilted the weeds within about um, 30 minutes or so. They were all drooping and wilting and starting to turn brown. Um, killed every single one of them. It killed, uh, it killed grass too. So it's one of those that you can use in your flower beds. Um, and a good trick to, to use in your flower beds when you're spraying for weeds is to get yourself a piece of cardboard or plastic and make yourself a shield so that you can put the, the shield between your flowers and, and where you're spraying. Um, this stuff is not going to leach out in the soil and kill your plants that, you know, drift from, from spraying can. So, you know, make yourself a little shield, spray the weeds, move on. Over the top. Oh, okay, you see the flowers on over the top. Over the top is great. It kills grassy type weeds. It doesn't kill broadleaf weeds. It kills grassy weeds. Um, it says grass killer on there. It will kill your lawn. It can only be used on centipede grass. You don't want to use it on your St. Augustine, your zoysia or anything like that. It will kill bahia, which a lot of people hate. I know I do. I have it trying to go in, into the front of my lawn from a ditch. Um, it'll kill bahia and it'll kill Bermuda. So some of the more invasive grass species it'll take care of. So if you have bahia trying to invade your centipede, this is what you're going to want. Over the top needs to be sprayed in your lawn in the summertime. The hotter it is, the better it works. It does have rules of application. You do have to use spreader sticker or the surfactant with it in order for it to work correctly. And there are mowing laws that you have to abide by. Um, 
and then spraying over the top. Now over the top, um, if you read the label, it has probably five or six pages of product, uh, not product, of plants, ornamentals, et cetera, that you can spray it on. Um, can't go through all of them because there's too many, but you can spray it in a lot of your ornamental, ornamental beds. Um, I think it can be, I think it can be sprayed around certain daylilies, um, shrubs, trees, and even certain flowers and whatnot. Um, so, you know, over the top's great. Absolutely great. Um, poison ivy, ugh, gosh, poison ivy's tough. Um, I have a very, very, very high, um, I'm, I'm extremely allergic to poison ivy. It's one of my, um, you know, one of those things that's hard to get. Um, the weed free zone, if you ever have, see it popping up in your lawn, weed free zone, the 2,4-D and weed free zone will actually kill poison ivy and poison oak. So that'll be a solution for your lawn. Now, if it's growing in a wooded area, that's a little, that's, that's a little harder to, to control. Um, uh, the, the, what, what I have personally done in my lawn where I had it coming in, and I still don't have it 100% under control, but I'm getting there. We have a product, we don't, we're not gonna have a picture on this slideshow, but it's called Brush and Stump Killer. Um, it's where I had to go to get rid of it. I mean, it just, I've tried Roundup, I've tried everything. It just, it, it's horrible stuff. And the other thing about poison ivy is it produces berries in the fall, birds and squirrels eat them and you know, nature takes its course. And that, that's one, one way that it spreads. Um, a lot of people have it growing up their trees and whatnot. So again, what I talked about earlier, the paintbrush method is a good, really good method to use in trying to control poison ivy and poison oak. Um, I make my husband do it because I don't want to be anywhere near it. You just go out there with a, you know, throw away cheap paintbrush and you, you paint it on if it's growing up your tree or if it's growing around, you know, desirable ornamentals, you paint this uh, brush and stump killer. I use it full strength. Um, and you paint it on there and it'll kill it down to the root. And every site I work, it's taken me, we're looking at probably about three years or so now to get it under control. So you have to be very adamant. Every time you see it, you either spray it or you paint it. And that's how you get rid of poison ivy. It's not an easy task, but it can be done. Mary, I use the woody brush and stump killer too on poison ivy. Yes. And the I use those little foam paint brushes. They're really yep. cheap and mm -hmm. they work better than ones with bristles, I think. Yeah, they, they do. They're cheap, they're throwaway. And yeah, it does the job. Holds a lot of chemical too on there. All right, mm, lawn disease. Luckily we're getting to the time of year where lawn. Welcome Julie where lawn disease is not um, gonna be as bad. All right, fairy ring. Fairy ring, you see a lot. Fairy ring is caused from um, decomposing matter, basically. Say you had a, you know, some trees cut down and you had the stumps ground. Well, guess what? They didn't get all of that, um, that wood out of the ground. So all of that dead rotting organic matter um, that's gonna lie in the dirt there um, is full of nitrogen and other things. And it's going to cause you, well, not all the time, but most of the time to have um, fairy ring. I actually have one. There's three different types of fairy rings. Um, um, you know, a lot of them, you know, you'll just have a, you'll see a very, you know, it's very specific. If you have fairy ring, you know, it's going to be a ring. It's not going to be half a ring or a, um, anything like that. It's going to be very pronounced. You're going to know it's there. Um, uh, as you can see in the top picture, it's hard to see. You can see the outer edge, how um, deep dark that grass is. It's because of um, the, one of the, the attributions to fairy ring is high nitrogen. Um, just like we tell people when they have a lawn fungus, don't fertilize because the nitrogen and fertilizer can make a fungus. Here, if you have dead rotting matter in your yard where the fairy ring's at, you know, there's things you can do for it. Um, it's very hard to control. Um, um, you see it a lot more in drought situations than you do when it's really wet for whatever reason. Um, but adding um, um, sand is a good additive. If you have fairy ring, you can top dress it periodically with sand, a good quality sand, not just, you know, sand from your kid's play box or anything like that. You want to make sure you get good, nice sterilized sand and put in there. Um, 
Um, a lot of people get the fairy rings that have the can I do to kill mushrooms? Don't do it. The best thing to do about mushrooms is nothing. Because if you pick them, if you mow them, if you kick them, all you're doing is spreading those spores around and spreading them throughout their yard. So just let them naturally die. Okay, the chemical on your right, the liquid systemic fungicide too, it's also known as banner. That's one that can fight against fairy ring. Um, you have to use it for fairy ring. You can't, just, uh, you can't just spray it on. You have to use it as an actual drench. Um, so you have to drench it in, into that. Sorry, my dog's needy, y'all. Um, you have to actually drench it into that area. Um, uh, uh, it, it's not meant to be used as a drench, but we have a, another bottle of, um, of the banner. It's um, in a clear bottle. It's a super concentration. Super concentration. It's a little more expensive than the bottle you see on the right. Um, but it's one that you could um, you could you know mix up as a drench and you can drench that area. Another good thing to remember when you're dealing with fairy ring is don't cut your lawn too low. You want to make sure with St. Augustine, you know, three inches is, is ideal. A lot of people cut their lawns just way, way, way too low. And keep your lawnmower blades sharpened. It's I can't stress enough how important it is to keep your blades sharpened. Um, you want to sharpen them every gosh, I don't know, probably every four to five mowings, um, especially if you have a big yard, you know, if you, you know, get after you mow, if you get down there and you look and you see that the blades of grass are jagged, it's time to have that blade sharpened. That can, that just, you know, other issues with your grass. Um, also, before we leave fairy rings, another good way to help control it is lawn aeration. If you'll aerate your lawn yearly, best time to do that is in the spring. That's going to help as well. It adds, you know, oxygen to the dirt, to the um, to the roots, the soil. You know, uh, aeration is another good thing to do uh, as far as controlling fairy ring. I think there was a question that popped up, Audrey, but I didn't quite see what it said. Tim wanted to know the difference between an herbicide and a fungicide. Control fungus. Um, that's the other thing about fungus. You, um, you're not going to kill the fungus. You're going to control it. Once you have a fungal issue in your lawn, you're always going to have it. Fungus is soil borne. And, you know, it, it, it's tiny little spores, microscopic, that you'll never see. Um, it's just something that you're unfortunately going to have to live with here in, in, in Tallahassee, uh, fungal issues. Um, gray leaf spot. Gray leaf spot has been the worst I've seen it in years this year. Um, I think because I think one of the reasons is why we haven't had a proper winter. It, you know, last year it, it just wasn't, um, it wasn't, um, never got cold. So nothing ever really went um, dormant like it was supposed to. Um, just like it says on here, uh, you know, the warm rainy weather, the humidity, the, you know, nasty Florida summers that we have um, cause it. Um, and it, it, it makes the grass very, very unsightly. Um, Dacanil, um, it, we don't have a picture of Dacanil. Dacanil is really good for, um, gray leaf spot, but F-stop, the one on the left, F-stop has been our new go-to. F-stop actually lists um, gray leaf spot. It's a newer chemical. We bought it in a few years ago. You can get it in a granular form as well as a liquid form, and it works great. Um, it, it's, um, uh, if it's raining and raining and raining, you can't get out there and spray, use the granules. Um, put them out, water them in, you're good to go. If it's not as rainy, you can spray the F-stop about once a week um, or every seven to 10 days to help control that gray leaf spot. The other important thing in controlling gray leaf spot, do not fertilize while it's active because it will make it worse and get those lawnmower blades sharpened. It is very much, um, uh, a, I wouldn't say a cause, but it does not help to have jaggedly cut um, lawn. The it also helps to wash the underside of your mower so you don't it spread does. it. Mm -hmm. And if you have somebody that, that mows your lawn that comes in and, and they cut your grass, you need to, you know, you're paying them. You need to make demand that they clean the underside of their mower because not only are they bringing in disease, but they're bringing in 
who knows what else. So you, know, you need to ask them for that. Slime mold. Um, we usually see this in late spring uh, when it's really starting to warm up. Slime mold is actually non-harmful to your lawn. It's just something that happens. It'll look like, um, and I don't know why they call it slime mold because it's not slimy, but it looks like black dust all over. We see it especially in centipede. Um, it's basically um, the hot weather with an overabundance of nitrogen in the soil. Really, the only thing that you need to do is spray it off with a water hose or just leave it alone. Um, you know, there's there's not really anything to spray on there or do. It's not harmful. It looks bad, but I promise you it's not. Root rot, or what a lot of people call um, brown, brown patch. Um, this stuff is bad. Um, the picture is pretty, that's pretty much what it looks like. Um, the picture there up there in the corner, um, it, it's, it's very hard to control. Um, you can... Aeration is going to be good in fighting this, um, keeping that grass cut, you know, three inches, no lower, you know, don't, don't scalp your lawn, don't cut it too, uh, too low and spraying it with um, a systemic fungicide. Um, and that's the name of our fungicide is uh, by Fertilum. It's a systemic fungicide. Um, it's going to be the one, I believe, yes, on the right, right there. Um, spraying that 10 to 14 days is going to help. Um, what we do recommend when you have this issue and with most fungal issues is that you don't just spray one fungicide all the time. You want to spray this fungicide, spray it, wait 10 days, spray it again, wait 10 days, spray it again. That third or fourth spraying, you're going to want to change it up. You don't want your grass to build up an immunity to these fungal, um, these fungicides. So your third or fourth spraying, you may want to use the F stop or you may want to use the Dacanil or something like that, and then go back to using your liquid systemic fungicide. Hmm. Pest problems. Before we move to pests, there was a question about controlling coral ardesia. Ugh, gosh, coral ardesia, um, going back to the brush and stump killer, what me and Audrey are talking about, coral ardesia is very invasive, you know, we're, it's not even allowed to be sold in, in the state of Florida. Um, it, it, it's hard because it produces berries, it spreads easily, the birds and the squirrels like to eat it. Um, brush and stump killer is going to be your friend. Cut it, cut it down where you just have like, you know, this much coming up from the ground and paint that brush and stump killer. If you don't have time for that, mix the brush and stump killer up and just spray it. If you have a big area where it's just taken over and you don't necessarily care about that area or what you do to it, there's another product called, um, uh, not 5N20, it's called, um, Audrey, my brain stopped working. Um, we have another product that's a total veg, Pramatol. It's a total vegetation killer. It will kill the, will kill everything and anything it comes in contact with and it will be um it will sterilize the the, the ground for about a year so nothing's going to grow there um so that's something you have to keep in mind a you're going to kill everything in its path b nothing's going to grow there for at least a year so there are options in coral ardesia but my best advice to you with that one is to be patient because it's not going away there's another it's question someone wants to know if the weed killer can be used in October? Um, most of them, yes. Most everything we talked about to um, mimosas, yes, same thing, brush and stump killer or the Pramatol. Um, but most of these weed killers I'm talking about, yes, they can all be used right now. The only one that I would tell you to be careful with is the weed free zone um, because of the temperature restriction. It's been cool, so we've been able to use it, but you know, it got up to 90 degrees yesterday, so you wouldn't want to spray it on a day when it's going to be hot. All right, pests, chinch bugs. Chinch bugs, you'll never see. Uh, a lot of people come and say, well, I don't, I don't see anything. What's, what's killing it? Um, these little guys right here are, if you notice the back of them, that looks like they have a little white stripe on their back. They live beneath the surface of the soil, so you'll never see them. Um, we ask people to bring in samples because we know how they get them to come out. Um, we typically see them in the early, late part of spring, early summer. Um, throughout even till now. I haven't had anybody come in with a chinch pug problem in probably at least a month, maybe longer, because they like it hot and they, but mostly they like it very dry. The drier it is, the better, um, <clears throat> better suited the environment for them. 
Um, they're fairly easy to control. We have some chemicals, we have acephate, there's bifenthrin, there's a lot of things you can do to control them. Um, the lawn is going to look like um, straw, basically. It's like your grass is going to stand up straight, just like it is, you know, if you walked out there and it was green, but the grass blades are going to look like they're going to be a kind of a deep yellow. And then once that deep yellow goes away, this is what you're left with. And typically, another good way to tell if you have chinch bugs or not, for whatever reason, they usually start near a sidewalk or a driveway or something like that, kind of a circular pattern, and they work their way out. Um, but they can be very damaging to your lawn. Um, they don't just kill the blades, they kill it down to the root. So if you think you have a chinch bug problem, you wanna get on top of it as soon as possible. All right, I think the next one she had up were lawn grub. Um, grub worms are, are, are uh, the one on the far right right there. Um, that's a grub. Grubs are, in my opinion, the least of your worries in your lawn. The worst are going to be your um, sod web worms, army worms, et cetera. Um, they're the ones that are going to do all of the damage to your lawn. Those are the ones that <clears throat> have the little moths that fly around. If you go out in the evening, shine a light, or just walk through your yard, you'll just see moths everywhere. Um, they're nocturnal, so the moths are going to be hanging out in your uh, in your shrubbery, your um, you know, your bushes and stuff like that. And at night, that's when they come out and they hover over your lawn, lay eggs. The larvae is what actually does the damage. The larvae feeds on your lawn, you know, and the whole circle of cycle of life continues on. Um, they can eat your lawn. They can eat a lawn in a matter of a week. Um, I'm still dealing with sod webworms in my lawn right now. Um, it's, they're hard to control. Um, um, they love this, you know, ha we haven't had rain in about a week. It looks like it's gonna rain out there right now, but they love um, the tropical weather, the rainy. Tropical weather is their favorite. They thrive in it. Um, they do overwinter here. So, you know, they're not necessarily gonna go away this winter. You're not gonna see them. They're just gonna be in hibernation basically. And then in the spring is when they start reproducing, but you typically don't see the damage until eh, July. The damage is worse. We have found over the years, we keep records of this stuff, August, September, and October, September being the worst month for sod webworms. It is the worst month for sod webworms. So if you know these things and you know what the damage is and, and you know what it looks like, be proactive in the following years and battling this, you can start adding um, granules to your lawn, say in July. You could do a granular in the spring as well, maybe in April or May. Um, there's two, there's bug blaster and there's grub free zone. Um, bug blaster is bifenthrin. Grub free zone is imidacloripid. Imidacloripid is going to do a better job killing your grub worms and stuff like that. It's a little more expensive, but it works very well. But if you stay on top of it and you apply these chemicals, um, you know, uh, in these months where they're really bad, I would and it may be in July monthly, um, then you'll get a kind of a leg up on them and, and, and hopefully you won't have that bad of a problem. You probably will still have some. So spraying is gonna be a must. You're gonna wanna use the um, Surrender, Martin Surrender, which is acephate 75% or the bifenthrin, the liquid bifenthrin. If you want an organic alternative, you can use BT or you can use Spinosad, but that can be very expensive. And because they're both bacteria, they wash off easily, so you have to spray them more often, but they are an organic alternative to using the chemical in your lawn to, to control the, um, the cut worms, the army worms, web, web worms, et cetera, et cetera. And um, no, okay. Um, the, you know, as far as a prevention, um, a healthy lawn, you know, fertilization, um, um, using the granulars. Um, like I said, you know, you can use them starting, I would do an application in the, in the spring, and then I would do an application um, probably starting in July. And just keep your liquid um, and on, on hand, just in case. If you guys have dealt with this, in this, this year or year before, you're probably gonna deal with it next year and the next year and the next year, unfortunately. 
a lot of people come in and they've never had it before and they don't understand, you know, why now? I don't know. I don't have the answer for that. Um, that's BT. That's the organic. Um, that one will kill um, the webworms and whatnot. But like I said, you need a lot of it. Um, it's a bacteria, so you have to spray it more often. If it rains or even the dew in the morning, it, it's gone. Um, it's going to wash right off. Um, so the best time to spray these are at night. Mole crickets. The best time to control mole crickets is in uh, we have um, a mole cricket bait, which is carbaryl. Um, carbaryl is, used to be considered organic. I don't know if they still consider it organic or not, um, but you can put that in the, um, um, you can spread that in the lawn in the spring to help with, um, you know, reproduction, the babies and all that. And then you can, you can treat in May, June, something like that with um, the grub-free zone. That's the imidacloropid. Um, that'll help too. It's a granule as well. Um, in all of my learnings about mole crickets and whatnot, the granules work better than the liquids do in, in to keep them under control. Oh gosh, yellow jackets. Yellow jacket nests, um, you know, I, it's, that's an unfortunate thing when you have them. <laughs> In the, uh, in the in the lawn. Um, they're gonna have, um, a lot of people come in, they, they know where they're flying in, but they're gonna have more than one way out of their nest. Um, so you might just see one hole, one t very, very small hole. What you have to do is you have to research, you have to watch them. And so you have to, um, you know, you have to kind of study them to see where all of these entrances and eg exits are, because I promise you they have more than one. Um, there are ways to to treat them, and like it says here, um, disturb by mowing and all that. I, I get customers all the time that come in because they have been just attacked when they're mowing their grass by these yellow jackets um, and their nests underground. So controlling yellow jackets is hard, but there is a way to do it. Um, we have a um, a solution for it that was given to us by a professional um, that actually eradicates them in people's lawns. Um, it's kind of a two-step process, but it does work. Um, it's uh, basically you're having to um, find these holes. You have to do this work late in the day, as late as you can. You know, if it's, you know, nighttime outside is when you want to do it because they're in their nest. Um, and you spray it, you wait a few days and you apply a dust um, into the ground. And there are safety precautions. If you have this issue, come in and talk to us. We'll tell you what safety precautions to take and how to do it um, in order to eliminate them in your lawn. Or you can, like it says here, you can, you can deal with them um, because they do, you know, they're predators. Um, you know, they do take care of other, other pests and stuff. But, you know, if, you know, nobody wants to be attacked by a swarm of yellow jackets. Fire ants. Um, the product that kills sidewear worms, <clears throat> um, the Smart and Surrender. If you, um, a lot of people, we get the question all the time. Um, a lot of people will come in and, 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 and get stuff for sidewear worms. It is actually listed as fire ants. It's what the farmers use in their crops, you know, in their fields um, to control fire ants because it's 75% acetate. It works great. Um, the fire ants you want to um, uh, treat with this, with the acetate. Um, I, I prefer it. Um, we sell it under another name brand of Orthene. It's labeled, you know, for fire, you know, for homeowner use fire ants. Basically, all you do is just take about a tablespoon or two and sprinkle it around the mound. Don't disturb the ants. It's very important not to, to take a stick and make them mad and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you want to not, not, not make the ants mad when you treat them um, and sprinkle it over there. Um, a lot of people use Amdro. There's so many things out there for fire ants. Everybody has their own thing that works best for them. I personally use the Absophate. I don't have any fire ants in my yard. I'm happy about that. And I believe that's why um, they, uh, Let's see, homemade remedies. Um, Audrey, I'm gonna let you talk about that because I've never used the homemade remedies. Okay, um, I can tell you, I have used the surrender before I went organic and it is very effective. And uh, it smells ungodly. Awesome. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really effective um, on the fire ants. There's also um, a product and I can't remember the name of it, I think Amdro made it that you it was a 
you put it out early in the season, like in March or, or April, and it uh, kept them from building nests. And uh, I used that for several years and that worked pretty well. But now that I'm organic, I don't use any of those. What um, I tried the raw grits and the, the philosophy behind it was they're dry, the ants will eat them and then they'll swell once they're inside their bodies and, it, and make them explode from the inside. I know people who swear by it. I don't use that. I never found it doing any good for me. There is also a theory that if you uh, take your shovel and mix uh, and get a scoop of soil full of ants from one mound and mix it with another, they'll fight, you know, sort of a Game of Thrones kind of thing. Um, I've never found that to be effective either. Uh, boiling water will kill the ones it hits, but it doesn't do much good if you uh, are trying to get down into the mound. And those mounds go way deep. You see a mound a foot high on the surface, it's probably 10 to 12 feet deep underground. And uh, so what I do is I take my shovel or my hoe and turn it upside down and ran the handle as far into the fire ant nest as I can. Uh, and I pour household ammonia in there, and which also stinks. And what it does is because of that network, that little warren of tunnels under there, it turns it into a little gas chamber and it doesn't kill every one of them. They'll up and move, but it'll be smaller. And if you keep chasing them around two or three times, they end up either dying or leaving. So uh, I have had good luck. It will um, burn your grass, but it won't kill it. It'll come back. And then you've got a lot of nitrogen in it. Uh, so that's what I use, but uh, they're nasty. I didn't, it, and my right foot right now has about 10 bites on it because I got in a mound that I didn't realize when I did not have on my protective boots. Um, and a lot of people are extremely allergic to them, just like Mary's allergic to poison ivy. And so you can, you can go into to shock if you deal with it. So uh, really, you know, check out before you go in, especially if you got high weeds right now, make sure that the um, fire ants haven't taken over and built a mound underneath. Get your garden rake and just pull the weeds back so you can see what you're dealing with because they are nasty. But if you don't mind, if you're not organic, I would recommend the surrender. I've never seen anything work as well. <clears throat> and this, this is surrender. On um, fire ant mounds, though, don't mix it up and spray it. Put it on there dry. And then the little <clears throat> bottle on top is for application for chinch, bug, chinch bugs, web worms, spittle bugs, anything like that you may have. You're going to mix it up, make a liquid out of it, and spray it. But for fire ant mounds, you can see it on there. Sprinkle it on dry. Works better that way. <clears throat> Spittle bugs, speaking of them. Spittle bugs, um, typically, you know, we, we, we don't see a lot of, um, we get people that come in with them. In my opinion, spittle bugs are more annoying than they are damaging. Um, they can damage your lawn. Um, a good sign um, to know if you have spittle bugs, well, you're going to know it because when you're out there walking in your lawn, they're going to be flying around driving you crazy, is you see the purple blade on the, on the leaf right there? That's what they do. They turn your grass purple. Um, for whatever reason. And then you'll see the spittle bug foam on there, which is pretty nasty. Um, so that's a good way to, um, to tell if you have spittle bugs or not, but they're not one of the effects. So unless they're driving you crazy, I tell people just to leave them be, let them, let them do their thing. Um, because they just don't do a lot of damage to your lawn. They may, if you have a very bad infestation, in that case, I would recommend that you spray Bug Blaster, the bifenthrin right there is a good one. Um, it's what our spray department uses. Of course, they use it in a different form and it's a lot stronger than what, as, to what you as a homeowner can buy. Um, but Bug Blaster is really good. I actually spray it in my backyard for um, the webworms and for mosquitoes. Oh my gosh, the mosquitoes. This stuff, if I spray it once a month, to help with the mosquito problem um, that I have, and it works 
great. So I really don't have a mosquito problem anymore because I spray this under my deck, in my shrubbery, all over my lawn, and it really, really, really helps keeping the mosquito population down. Um, so if you're looking for mosquito control, get yourself some bug blaster. The liquid seems to work better than the granules as far as the mosquitoes go. And I just want to add um, that a lot of people are complaining that, you know, I can't get that anymore. They won't sell that anymore. And it's because the people on our spray crew have to go through extensive training on proper use and proper precautions. So, you know, any of the uh, companies that do that for you, they've been trained on how to use those products safely. And it, they are so toxic that you can't really let the public loose with them. And that's why. Uh, Tim also has a question. What can you use on ants that regular old ants, not fire ants? Um, any of the stuff we talked about, the bug blaster is a good one. Um, you know, uh, uh, any general insecticide, uh, if you have them in the lawn, uh, an application of the bug blaster granules or the grub free zone granules in your lawn, you know, once every you know, month or two, it's going to help keep your other ants down. If you have the ants coming inside invading your house, um, I know that once or twice a year, I get what they annoying um, that we sell these little traps. Um, I think it's called, I think the brand name is Taro. It's in an orange box. It's ant bait. I buy the little tube. I'll take a little paper towel and I'll put a little sugar and stuff on it and I'll poison it <laughs> with the taro and it, it knocks them out. Um, so they're not as hard to control as people think. Just keep it out of the reach of pets. So you never want to put it on the ground. You want to put it on top of your cabinets to help control them. Um, but typically they're, they're, they're only in, inside your house for a couple of weeks and then they go away. Uh, now, spinosad, the one you see in front of you right here, there's actually a granular form of that. If you are looking for something organic for fire ants, it's called, I think it's called come and get it. Um, it's in a blue bag. I think it's called come and get it, um, but it is spinosad. It's a granular form. You can sprinkle that in your, um, if you have ants, fire ants in your garden, your vegetable garden, you don't want to put a poison in there. This stuff's organic. It's a granular. You can sprinkle that in, in the rows of your garden and it's type of ant for that matter. Um, you know, beetles, all that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for an organic solution to um, ants, fire ants, you can use a granular spinosad and you can also use something we have called diatomaceous earth. A lot of people use that for, um, you know, fleas and stuff like that. Bug blaster safe around pets. I use it because I have two dogs that love to um, um, eat grass. They like to graze in the backyard, but um, I'll spray the backyard and I'll wait two days and I'll, I'll spray the front yard with, uh, um, with the asaphate because my problem up there is worse. Um, I, I will alternate spraying. So I'll spray the backyard one day, I'll wait two days and spray the front yard. Um, and I will walk the dogs, you know, which I should be doing anyway, rather than letting them roam around in the backyard. I wait at least two days before I let them out there to, to graze on the grass. And I've never had personally any problems. Um, so in my opinion, yes, it's safe. I wouldn't let them go out there immediately following a spraying. You know, common sense, just wait at least two days before you let them go out there, especially if they're grass grazers like mine. Yes. Um, overwatering is one of the biggest things that we find. We actually have um, forms we give out when people buy um, grass from us on, on watering because we, we find that people overwater. The best time of day to water your lawn, your garden, anything is in the morning. Um, you have to think of it in terms of this, you know, you don't want to go all day without water. Um, neither does your lawn or your plants. So water early in the morning. The best time to water is between 5 a.m. and 10 a.m. Watering in the evening only and more things like that. Um, uh, the lawn only needs an inch of water a week. Right now, we're not in under any kind of drought. So, you know, in my opinion, watering is not necessary right now. 
Um, so if we're going through a drought, we haven't had rain for weeks, sure, water, you know, a, a good trick to do um, if you have an irrigation system or a sprinkler is you can take a, a, a tuna fish can or one of those small um, pineapple cans and you can turn your sprinkler on, set that can out somewhere in the middle, you know, of it, not right up on the sprinkler and, and time it, see how long it takes to fill up that can. That's an inch of water. So if it takes an hour to fill up that lawn twice a week for 30 minutes in the morning. If it takes 30 minutes, I'll water my lawn twice a week for 15 minutes. But if we're getting rain once or twice a week and it's substantial, you do not need to water your lawn. Um, you know, uh, overwatering is, is a big problem. It really is. And that can cause fungal issues and other things. Yes, <laughs> one of my biggest pet peeves. And, you know, people get somewhat offended when they come in um, and they bring a grass blade sharpen. I don't mean any offense. It's just a, a fact of life. Sharpen your mower blade. It, it is it is extremely important. And if you have a lawn service that comes in and cuts your lawn when they're done, go out there and expect your lawn. If the, if the tops of your grass aren't smooth, cut, like, you know, getting your hair cut or cutting a piece of fabric, if it's jagged, then, you know, you're paying them for a service. You need to demand that they sharpen their mower blades because it, it just invites in disease and other things. All right, questions. Yeah, I missed what you said about Captain Jax. Can you repeat what you said? Jax, um, in reference to ants, well, whatever you whatever you said, it's, I mean, I've used it for a lot of things, and I think it works. Yes. Well, and, you, know, well you you can use Captain Jack's or the Spinosad if you have a sod webworm problem in your lawn. You can spray the Captain Jack's or the Spinosad. The problem is because it is a bacteria, you have to spray it more often than you would the the harsher chemicals. So you have to be proactive in spraying the Captain Jack's. There's also a granular form. It's called I think it's called um, Come and Get It. It's in a blue bag. If you have a fire ant problem or any type of ant problem, yeah, you can that. use that granular form of um, of spinosad, Captain Jacks. Um, yeah. Okay, Anybody else have a question? Audrey, I'm gonna let you answer the recording question. I know that's something we're working on, guys. Uh, this one's recording. There. From my end, uh, Mary cut out a few times, and I don't know if it's just my computer or if uh, if it came out or not. So I'm going to go back and listen to it and see if we got sound. Yeah. Um, before, our, I'm sorry. I'm... Go ahead. Now you're frozen, <laughs> and I know yeah. it's probably because where you're at, you're in the dungeon. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, now we have a little poll we'd like you to take. It's just three or four questions. And then I'll tell you what, uh, what great uh, treat we have for you for attending today. So I'm going to launch the poll. And uh, it's pretty easy. Need to tell there's four questions I had I tried to submit and it wouldn't go, but then I scrolled up and saw the other question. Ah. Uh. Okay, we've lost a few people. Um, at our peak, we had 35 today, and that's terrific. Thank you so much for taking time. Mary, thank you for taking time on your day off from us. <laughs> I don't mind at all. Thank you, guys. To do this. Um, as I said, Mary is a, a font of knowledge, and uh, she's here Sunday through Thursday. She comes You're in welcome. early, and occasionally on Friday, like yesterday. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
looks like mm -hmm. most people have voted. There's one person who has it, but we'll we'll keep it up. Uh, it looks like people are finding it helpful to attend these. Um, the majority try to garden organically. Um, everyone wants to attend, plans to attend. Uh, what's very interesting is 93% uh, of you prefer the virtual seminar to a live in-person seminar. So um, that's cool. That's cool to know. Um, and I'll be sending out uh, coupons later uh, for joining us today. We are going to give each of you four pansies, each in a four inch pot. And that's what we're selling for for $10 right now. And you will uh, be able to come in and pick out four. We have a multitude of colors. They are gorgeous. We also have snapdragons and violas. Our, our cool weather plants are in. We also have a great selection of mums in various sizes and some new veggies for your garden. So um, hang in there. I want to tell you next week, we're going to be talking about camellias or camellias, depending on how you prefer to pronounce it. And we'll also, the week after that, we've got something special for you. Uh, I had intended to do um, something on monarchs because this is their migration season uh, on the 17th, so as not to conflict with the monarch festival down at St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge. But I found out last week they've canceled it because of COVID and the need to keep everybody safe. So they are going to partner with us on the 24th and we're going to do a virtual monarch festival. So I'm looking forward to that. And then the last Saturday of the month, the 30th or 31st, we'll be doing um, how to keep color in your garden through the cool months. Uh, so we got a lot of exciting stuff coming up and I hope you can join us. I will uh, see you all when you come in. I'll try to get those coupons out today and maybe tomorrow, it just depends. Mary, thank you once again. You're Terrific welcome. as always. Anytime. All right. And I've just shared the poll results if you want to take a look at them. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Audrey. Thanks, Mary. Appreciate Thank you. it. Absolutely. If anybody has ideas for future seminars, please send me an email. Tim, we're doing fruit trees November 7th. <laughs> hey, Susan. Tim. Hey, Tim, are you still with me? Mute. Yes, I, I can unmute it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then it, it froze up on you a bit. Yes, Trevor's going to do uh, a session November 7th, the first Saturday in November, on fruit trees for North Florida. Oh, awesome. Okay. So, yeah, we've got several good ones lined up. So, uh, everybody be safe, and I'll see you soon at the nursery. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.